depending upon uh, your comfort level. Um, uh, we're going to be recording this session and posting it on YouTube. Uh, so if you don't want to see your face on YouTube, uh, please feel free to turn off your camera. Um, and uh, David, you could start the recording now. Um, uh, if you'd like to chat during the meetup, um, please use the use our, our Slack because um, the meetup chat will go away as soon as we're done um, and we can continue the conversation afterwards in our Slack. Um, uh, so um, uh, the primary focus of today's session is to have a conversation about uh, next steps in learning um, to help us plan our program for this, uh, uh, this daytime session. Um, if there any remaining time that we have in the hour, um, uh, we'll take a look at a uh, security upgrade process uh, that I've been working on for the OAuth 2 client module in Drupal 8. Uh, these are our organizers, um, and uh, we're very grateful for uh, everyone who gives their time to help Drupal NYC happen. And if you'd like to be part of making Drupal NYC happen, we'd be happy to have some of your time. So please join us. Uh, we're on Twitter and we have a Slack and uh, both of those things help us keep, keep us all updated. So please join us there. And as always, um, please support the Drupal Association because without Drupal.org, how, how can we Drupal? Uh, uh, decoupled days are coming up. Uh, in, it'll be virtual, but it's New York based. Um, and uh, Drupal Camp NYC planning is well in hand. Um, we're really hoping to have a hybrid event um, in the fall and uh, volunteers are welcome at both of those. I said that already. Innovation roadblocks um, for industry. Uh, pardon? We have a special guest, World Cup and Olympic um, so uh, we have a, a website, Drupal NYC, um, DrupalNYC.org. Um, we shipped it off of another domain um, and off of a static site on GitHub. Uh, and we threw together a Drupal website over a weekend. Um, so it's officially a Drupal website, but it could be a lot better. So we, if you are interested in working on Drupal on Drupal.nyc, Mike. or DrupalNYC.org, um, please join our website okay. improve channel in Slack. I'll use my computer, we'll log on, all right? Okay, um, and, uh, and join us. Uh, we'd love to have you speak. If there's something you've been working on, um, some, something you've learned recently, you'd like to share what you feel like you'd like to share, um, we'd love to have your content. And so speak to David or me or email speak at DrupalNYC.org. And uh, that's our intro. So uh, David, over to you. Cool. thank you, Sean. So I'm really glad to be here again. I feel like the New York Drupal meetup is my Drupal community. And I'm I've been really looking forward to this chat where I, where we get to hear what's the next thing you need to learn in your Drupal journey. And I'd like to get to know each of you a little bit more as well. I know we've had a little bit of a chat before we, we got started. So maybe we could chat about, um, if you could again mention your, your name, your role, something about you, something you enjoy doing outside of work or something you've picked up since the COVID re restrictions. Uh, and then talk a little bit about um, what you feel is the next thing you need to learn in your Drupal journey. And we want everyone to feel comfortable here, so don't feel you have to, um, to respond or um, respond to, to questions. Uh, and I know everyone here is very respectful and polite, so I might ask people if there is a, a long awkward silence. Um, and we know how great the Drupal community is. And so I think a, a space like this, a safe space to share is a great place to, to learn. I might just give an example of how useful the community is. So last month I shared a challenge I was having where um, there was a, a views contextual filter uh, that I just didn't get. 
And I, just in this meeting last month, I shared that and, and quite a few people had, had a few different, um, gave me some feedback. And um, within a couple of days, this thing that was sitting on my plate for maybe for months, I was able to solve. So I really appreciate having a group where we can, we can share stuff. Um, so maybe I should go, I'll go first in sharing, I'll share my name, my role, um, and what I feel the next thing I need to learn. So I think, you know, my name is, is David. I'm working for a Christian mission organization in Peru. Um, I've, uh, I'm working in a very small team. So it's just myself and Ephraim, who you meet in a, in a second. And we've got a separate team of five who are in the, the content team. And I of, often feel like I'm the worst <laughs> Drupal developer in the world because I have a really narrow set of Drupal skills where I need to do everything using the little I know. Um, so I think one, one thing that's always on my list is knowing Drupal 8 better. Um, but if I had to pick one specific thing, I think it would be views contextual filters because they are, are just so useful. Um, and I might add one more thing to the list is uh, I've recently released a module and one of the, my, the next step in this process is to get the security advisor, the security advisor uh, approval. Um, so that's, that's a little bit about, about me. Oh, I didn't mention something I enjoy doing outside of work. Um, since the pandemic, um, a whole family have been, the restrictions here in Peru have been quite strong. So our whole, whole family somehow got into chess. And so our kids and well, my wife and I are, are chess freaks at the moment. Cool. So let me ask, um, Richard, don't feel like you have to remember those questions. I'll, um, I, I can ask you as well. So Richard, do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, what you enjoy doing outside of work, and then the next step in your Drupal journey. Which Richard? Okay. <laughs> um, I, I, I'll go. Uh, my, go my, my mic's open. Uh, all right, I live in Seattle, even though my background's in New York. I'm from New Jersey originally. I'm freelancing right now. I'm, I'm, I'm in between contracts, so I'm looking for work. I'm doing a little bit of work right now, mostly front end. I've been a front ender. I started out doing cold fusion in like 1998. So uh, I, I shifted to Drupal and to a lesser extent WordPress in 2010, uh, having gone to the DrupalCon in San Francisco in 2010. And I felt like I was in Oz. So um, it was great. And I fell right into the community. Um, outside of work, I am a volunteer at a, at a local cinema, which has been closed for well over a year. And by the time we reopen, it will have been closed for a good 18 to 20 months, I think. And I will have forgotten how to thread the 35 millimeter projectors, but we have two of the last like five 35 millimeter projectors in Seattle. And during the pandemic, I started uh, doing a little radio show for, for like one of these, you know, the FCC released all these low powered stations a few years ago. So we've got a few in Seattle. So I'm doing a, a weekly, <laughs> radio show that I record in my home office and uh, oh. studio and <laughs> we they broadcast it on to a very like I have one friend who lives close enough to the station to hear it they, they stream it but he likes to listen on his radio so I so I'm basically doing this show for one person I know and maybe a few others that actually listen cool thanks Rich and what, oh, and what I need what I want to learn yeah. next is uh the decoupled. I want to get into the decoupled world with Gatsby or Next, and and that's that's really what's. I think that's holding me back a little bit. Okay. I don't. I don't. I don't know React as well as I know other things. Cool. Right, I'll I'll post the show in the uh, in the Slack <laughs> about that. <laughs> Thank you. I'll pass cool. to the other Richard. All right. Um, yes. Yeah, so like I said before, I work at Santa Barbara University. Um, we've been running Drupal 7 for, I don't know, 10 years or so. Scott probably can help me, can help date me uh, the last time I was involved. Um, and we're basically trying to evaluate what we're going to do with that site. Uh, so I'm trying to get back into the Drupal swing of things. I haven't done anything with Drupal 8 since the beta. Um, so I guess we're looking at Drupal 9. Um, as far as pandemic hobbies, I learned that working from home is not as fun as I always imagined it would be. <laughs> um, 
so we're starting to go back to the office now. I think it's getting more normal, but uh, we're still kind of in a mostly work from home situation. And yeah, what was your other question? And so the next step in your Drupal journey? Yeah, I mean, I guess it would be to kind of decide if we're going to go to Drupal 9 or if we should look at another CMS of some sort. Because uh, I imagine the migration from 7 is going to require like a full kind of redo of the site. Cool. Thanks, Richard. Um, so do you want to nominate the next person with? Uh, uh, yeah, I'll make Scott go. That sounds like a good idea. <laughs> I'm Scott. As Rich, I've been at this for many years, and it's getting to be scary how many years I've been doing some of the stuff. Uh, I think it, the budget cutbacks, they make them speed up the clock because months go by much faster than they used to. Um, during the pandemic, things didn't change that much for me because I always work from home. The only difference is I didn't head out to the gym or other things. Um, I'm happy that when my main outside activities, kayaking is opening up again. So like I probably won't do this because I just don't have time. But my group is doing a cleanup. We did a cleanup, a land-based cleanup of uh, Long Island City. We'll remove about 25 bags of trash just on the rocks alone. It's amazing how much trash people throw out. And now that we're starting up, we're hoping to have to do some things I hope to do another Manhattan circumvention again, um, circumnavigation where we go around Manhattan Island by kayak. The um, the ferry is down down the battery, referred to us as, as speed bumps, and they think we're crazy, which you must be, you know, you have to be careful because when you go behind those, by those ferries, they're pretty large and you're in a tiny little kayak. Um, my other business started up again, which is selling rubber duckies and uh, dragons and other weirdness at conventions. And in Drupal, I'm launching my um, data management bridging system, which is front end is Drupal, back end is MongoDB. And I'm off to one of my oldest clients I've had to show him to get his old Fox Pro data out of Fox Pro and into something he can use. So I'm excited. That's a project I've been working on since 83 or 84 which predates Drupal, MongoDB, and everything else. And it just adapt it. So um, we're, we're using a lot of different modules in the coming weeks. And that's my story. I'm sticking to it. And I'll nominate Ian. Ah. <laughs> Damn you, Scott. Damn you. Uh, <laughs> my name is Ian. Um, oh, actually, before Ian, before you, you continue, uh, two things intrigue me, Scott. Um, what is a rubber ducky? And the se second thing is okay. Um, where are they on my desk? Hold on, I'll put my camera on. And normally rubber duckies are all over my desk. Um, here we go. Like here's a one of the rubber duckies I have. It's a mummy. Okay. <laughs> and give me one second. Hold on, I'll be back in one second. My wife gave me the ceramic rubber ducky. To, to bounce ideas off of. Oh, and this is a celebrity duck. This is Harry Ponder and the duck he swallows. Oh, wow. Cool. And we have like um, Ziggy Star duck and we <laughs> have a uh, kiss duck and so forth. And we also have enamel pins made of the ducks. Here's a fireman duck. Oh, cool. <laughs> and have dragons and, and other weirdness. And they float. Did you say a Drupal front end MongoDB back end? Yes. I'm not using MongoDB to run Drupal. I leave Drupal, my SQL to do that because otherwise it, it won't work well. But I don't believe data to me can't be constrained. You can't structure data. It's very hard. You know, I can do the citation, the basic. So you could spin up the database and add things whenever you want to it. So if I'm doing this, and I want to add that it's Harry Ponder and he has a magic wand, I can add that as something in, in, in something being held. I don't need to structure the data. And then when we, we, we can return all the keys, you can see the keys and like holding something. You click on the key of holding something, and you can see the value magic wand, guitar, if it's like the, um, the Jerry Garcia duck, and so forth. And I'm all excited, cool. as I said, this started out and it's called Omni Product System Distribution back in as a hobby distributor and as a way to sell anything to anybody. And that was the beginnings of it. 
went to the micro P micro PC show for forty thousand dollars. I can get a piece. I could have gotten a computer system that's less powerful than what you could buy for five bucks. Uh, you know, the Raspberry uh, embedded on on, on circuit board. And, and we're right. Yes. Richard just asked if you could post a link to the the ducks on the Slack channel. Um, I don't have it yet. I'm I'm spinning up Rubber Ducktopia. Um, if you want to see, if you go to Pinzam, you'll see p i n z a m dot com. You'll see all my pins. If you go to Amazon.com forward slash shops forward slash Family Dragon, I'll put that in, in, the, in the thing. You can see all oh. the furry bones they sell. That's going back to side business. Saturday, I'll be in Brooklyn at the um, Big Apple Comic Con. It's free. Give the plug. Um, it's on in the Greenpoint Market. And that I'll be there. It's it's what I've done for most of my life. I, I've been selling oh. since, I, since I was selling at conventions since I was like 15 years old. Thanks, Scott. Yeah. Hey, Ian, you're up, up next. Sorry to interrupt you as you take a mouthful. for. In mid-flow. My name is Ian Finlay, uh, Drupal.org name, IJF8090. According to Drupal.org, I've been on that for 11 years and 12 months, which seems a little odd, but that's what it says. Um, but I think of myself as a, as a serial newbie. I first started with Drupal six years ago, got out of the development side of it, managed 70 Drupal seven websites, um, took about four years off and I'm now getting back into Drupal. So I missed all of Drupal eight. Um, looking for work, not terribly hard to be honest, but I am looking for work. Um, what I've been doing non drupally lately is I'm trying to learn guitar and that's going very slowly, but I can now pick out happy birthday. It's my daughter's birthday, you know, in eight days. So I've got eight days to get it down. Um, cool. I'll also, also do some volunteer work. I, um, work on a, uh, on a program called TDI Connect, where we refurbish um, donated corporate computers and um, distribute them to um, families in need in Trenton. Uh, what else? Uh, I also have set up this little co-working group called caributribe.org, where we're gonna try and teach each other Drupal and WordPress. But honestly, WordPress makes my head explode. So I'm going to let somebody else do the, the WordPress stuff. And my Drupal thing that I want to learn next is uh, migration. My brother built a site in 2007 and they, it was a Dublin history site. And they, the, the uh, host asked him to take it down because it was using too much storage. So it's been offline since 2007. It's pure HTML and CSS and I, we just, reloaded it and it came up great, but I want to migrate it to Drupal and do some cool. some other fun uh, fun projects with it as well. I want to do some machine learning AI. He has a whole bunch of uh, documents from the 1700s that I want to scan and machine learn and have him train to uh, tr train a, an algorithm to, to, to just correct the documents, highlight errors and stuff like that. And, highlight old spellings and replace them with modern English, that kind of thing. So that's that's where I'm at. Sounds great. Thanks, Ian. So migration is, I think that might be a common theme among quite a few of us. Cool. Do you want to nominate the next person? Oh, yes. I want to nominate Richard. No, Richard's already gone. But I think, Richard, didn't you and I work on N Drupal NYC years and years ago? Yeah, a long time ago with Scott. Yes. Let me see I if I can. Find another victim. Uh, <laughs> picking at random Jed Herzog. Hey everyone, my name is Jed. I'm a, my role is a senior software engineer um, working on the product team at Linkwell Health. And what we do there with Drupal, so Linkwell Health is mostly journalists that write healthcare content. And so We've built what we call HLE, the healthy living engine off of Drupal. And it's really kind of a hub and spoke model. So the, the hub is for all of our journalists and content creators to, to create the content, to manage the content and assign it out to what we call our client sites. And those are the spokes, right? So the spokes are how the content gets delivered from the main Drupal site out. 
And that's done through a variety of ways, uh, REST APIs, you know, XML, uh, like RSS type stuff, embed widgets, HTML, copy paste, stuff like that. But also we have the ability within our main hub Drupal site to spin off a microsite. So we can quickly create another Drupal site that's kind of a client of the hub and only gets a certain assigned content, stuff like that. So tons of different ways to distribute the content to all of our clients. Um, and that's what we do with Drupal. My, the next things I'm learning, I wanted to mention two things because one's very tactical. I, we do, we're starting to do a lot more dynamic content. So CTAs that are varying based on URL parameters and it's uh, breaking our front page cache, our front edge cache a lot. So we're getting more sophisticated about how we load dynamic content so that we can keep full page caches and varnish and stuff like that. Um, so that's a big technical thing for me. And then more of a philosophical management thing, I'm, I'm starting to get more involved in managing the product roadmap. So I'm, you know, kind of, that's new for me. I've never been a project manager. I'm not a project manager, but learning about roadmaps and the software that people use to manage them and, and trying to put uh, fences around that's going to be a good challenge. For me. So, um, things I enjoyed COVID or coming out of COVID, uh, you know, I was going to mention there's a lot of great video streams that happen during COVID, especially around music. A lot of musicians that weren't able to get out and play were offering free streams. You can even watch them after the fact. So I really enjoyed taking advantage of all that. And I, I'm following Ian's lead. Uh, I'm buying a guitar on Friday to start learning the guitar. So you know, I'll have to take a listen to you. <laughs> That's me. That's me. Cool. Thanks, Jim. Uh, one thing you mentioned dynamic content. I didn't, um, can you tell us a little bit more about? Sure, we've uh, got a system in place that we're relying on the Drupal block system, not necessarily the block UI, to like do CTAs. Like if you can imagine, uh, it's healthcare, so like a call your doctor CTA. But depending on your region, uh, that number you're supposed to call for your doctor might be dynamic. So based on the ads or, or the last touches that you're coming into the site, I'm going to be able to know something about the geography you're in or something more to give you better information than the most generic API. So I'm going to be swapping out that block. It, right now, it looks like probably for an entire different block, but also could be doing field to win a block. Um, and stuff like that. So we could do all that right now, but uh, in certain instances, it breaks our cache because it's dynamic. So it breaks the you, the full page cache simply because one little block is dynamic. Okay, cool. That's not ideal. Yeah, cool. And I'm guessing this is in Drupal 8. Um, sorry to be derailing the conversation, but I just kind of sp sprung up my interest. In Drupal 8, I understood that the, the cache is more block specific. Is there's a lot of aspects to Drupal 8 cache, and I might not be the expert in the room to talk about it, but there is internal page cache, which can block, cache a block, serve up that cache, that speeds up your site a lot. But, but the, the whole golden uh, grail or the holy grail that I'm going for here is uh, front end cache. So, so okay. getting it in varnish, where it can deliver the full page from cache. Okay. Um, and so most likely, I, and like I said, I might not be the expert to think about this, but with like big pipe and stuff like that and other tools, we'll be able to load containers on that page and then dynamically asynchronously serve up the content so that you can still load the full page from varnish cache, but and then kind of fill in the blanks as, as the page goes. Um, that's what we're working on. Thanks, Jeff. Do you want to nominate the next next person? Did both I'm Richards go? Both the Richards have gone. All right. Yeah. Oh, Ling, are, you <laughs> oh Ling, are you back? back. Yeah, yeah oh, I'm back. back. Kitty cat. There, there's a cat. <laughs> I saw a cat. Are you, no, are you um, back? I saw the initial you said you were back. So my name is Holling. I am senior DevOps engineer for the New York Public Library. Um, I was a Drupal developer full time for maybe four years, and then um, I got into configuration side. So uh, the library was asking whether or not I was interested in dedicating my time to deployment 
and so now I'm doing that full time. Um, we're still dealing with Drupal though. Like uh, for example, we are trying to containerize and setting up our uh, Drupal 7 installation into Docker. So uh, it gives a better experience for developers to try to deploy. Uh, it was done in like Git sub modules because that was what's available at the time. But now we have moved over to all these like new and shiny things that works better. Uh, where we're moving forward with the timeline. So that's uh, <clears throat> my non Drupal interests. Uh, since the pandemic, I really got into Korean TV. And <laughs> after like maybe a thousand hours of Korean TV, I decided to learn Korean for real. So I'm now like, a, I wouldn't say I'm a second or third grader, but it feels like I'm back in second or third grade again, where you look at those learn to read programs, you're trying to stand out the syllables based on the alphabet. So I could tell uh, the street signs while I'm in Koreatown, whether or not that's a bank or is a place to eat. And I start to get the really cheesy jokes on TV, the really cheesy ones <laughs> that like, I'm trying to make you laugh kind of jokes. So there we go. Uh, who hasn't gone yet? The... Oh, oh um, yeah. am I last? That's impressive. What, if you, to be able to tell jokes in a different language, I think that that shows that you've reached a good level in that language. I, I hope so. Like one or two, the, the ones that are just kind of like, if you don't understand the language, you miss it. But if you have some idea of like things that rhyme poorly or they're trying to catch the sounds and um, I, 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 my uh, native language is I, I speak Cantonese. So uh, they have like the same rhyming scheme. So the, the humor is similar and that's helpful. Yeah. Okay. Oh, cool. <laughs> And so for you, what um, would you, you're working in DevOps, so what would you say in the Drupal space or out of the Drupal space, what do you think is your next thing you need to learn? I would like to automate as best as I can because I'm staring at this problem right now where we're using CloudFormation templates to spin up the stack, but it's still showing me uh, the Drupal uh, install uh, screen. And I was thinking, wait, didn't I tell you, didn't I tell Drupal what, which one's the database already? Why isn't doing a direct import? But this is more um, a cloud formation specific problem and not necessarily Drupal. So I need to feed Drupal the right information. So I'm still working on that. Like I'm just staring at that right now. It's like, why, why is it asking me for site name? <laughs> So yeah, there we go. Cool, thank you. And do you want to nominate the next person? Uh, has Jeffrey Vargas gone already? I have not. Go for it. Hi guys, uh, my name is Jeff Vargas. I'm uh, Senior Director of Technology for the Entertainment and Lifestyle Groups, which covers the uh, Bravo, Oxygen, Sci-Fi, USA and Universal Kids Networks um, at NBC Universal. Um, I've been working with Drupal for on and off the past 12 years, maybe, and um, I don't do a lot of hands-on development anymore, but I do a lot of management configuration and, you know, working with various integrations, whether we're trying to build out feeds for, um, for Alexa products or we're, you know, working with different um, CDNs. Um, and one of the things I would like to learn more um, similar as front end work. Um, so I've been diving into Gatsby JS um, the past two months and over the pandemic, I also decided I wanted to learn something about mobile app development. So I started doing uh, some Swift training so that I could do a little digging into uh, developing iOS apps and you know, just scratch an itch. Um, what else can I tell you? Um, something I like doing outside of work, um, I have found that, you know, taking a nice long walk in the morning after I drop my kids off at school really sort of helps me sort of center. It's a little bit of, you know, meditation. Also get out of the house because, you know, I've been stuck inside too long for the past uh, 15 months. Um, but uh, yeah. What else can I tell you? Thanks, Jeff. Um, so with Drupal, are there um, some challenges at the moment that, um, that you'd love to work through or being in management, I guess that might take you one step back from some of the day-to-day -day pains of Drupal. Uh, you know, I, I think, you know, just really performance tuning. I think, you know, we have a, a site that's really, 
you know, uh, some of the content types are, are a little complicated and, and heavy. So, you know, really getting queries so that they're not so cumbersome and so slow um, because, you know, we, we've managed to get some pages to load fast, but then, you know, once the cache runs out after an hour, you know, we see the spikes pick up and then they drop after a few minutes. So, you know, really some performance tuning, but we're currently in the process of migrating um, sci-fi.com over to Drupal 8. Um, it's gonna be on the same code base that runs bravotv.com and oxygen.com. Um, and they are simultaneously looking at what steps need to be taken in order to migrate up to Drupal 9. So we've, you know, got a, um, a better handle in terms of what we're going to have to do on our own, what what modules we may have to patch or, or just rebuild um, for our own purposes. And it's uh, narrowed down to a handful from a couple dozen. Cool. And sci-fi.com is an awesome looking site. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's been a labor of love for the past seven and a half years. Cool. Thanks, Jeff. And uh -huh. I, I might nominate the next person. I'll nominate um, Joanne. And remember, um, feel free to speak, but at the same time, if anyone doesn't want to share, that's that's fine as well. Um, Joanne, your mic is muted. Uh, yeah, I work at UMass um, Amherst and I've uh, been uh, Drupal since 2011. Um, that was Drupal 7, uh, was just coming on the scene. I've been uh, developing locally with, actually I started with Drupal 9, um, and actually a lot of theming, um, wanting to create, um, doing a bootstrap theme. And that's kind of been fun uh, a little bit, I think. Um, I feel more comfortable on the back end stuff, you know, but um, I need to get this theme, so I'm doing that. Um, I think the uh, interest I have at the moment is wondering if uh, people are using uh, web form particularly or any other configuration module custom contributed uh, for registration, not simple registration, but more like um, classes, right? So classes are connected to categories of topics and subjects. And so there might be many classes in that um, and then those classes will have people registering for them. That kind of a system. If anyone has, um, has developed anything like that or is working with uh, current contributed modules and um, would love to hear your experience, um, that's what I'm tackling right now. And I have investigated various contributed modules. Um, and the one I think I'm gonna use is the web form, the most current version, which is way different than D7. So, um, interest uh vermont's beautiful you know and walking is great and i love it and i like kayaking too which i just did the other day so that's it for me cool thanks jared so i think you're in the right group for the web form module because jake who's the, the developer of the web form module is part of the new york group that he was here last month yeah so hope uh if you're looking to connect with the actual um author of the module um, that would be great. It sounds like you're doing some really interesting work with authenticated users and a, a complex re relational module uh, model. Yes, I have to. So hopefully, someone in the group um, I might be able to. Comfortable with? I think it's uh, you know not figuring it out, right? It's more like the module, the module itself, the web form module. It's got a lot of different stuff in it, and um, <laughs> it's uh, you know it's it's sort of like whenever you work with a module right you're really learning about the developer and how they decided to set things up and what their configuration is like and how they're you know interacting with content types blocks all sorts of stuff so um yeah and thank you cool thank you joan so two people interested in, in kayaking so yeah please stay safe on the water especially with these big boats that consider kayakers speed bumps you don't yeah. have to worry about me that i'm not one of those on uh, that, it's fun. It's fun to go through New York City on a kayak. There's nothing like going on the GW at midnight. I've also been under the Verrazano on a kayak. It's it's, it's like it's like kayaking upstream. <laughs> so, Joan, do you want to nominate the next person? Sure. Um, I'm 
for uh, Tulin. Tulin, would you like to share with us? Hi, can you hear me? Yes. I can't tell. Can Ellie, you guys... can hear you. Go ahead. Oh, nope. can see me. All right. Uh, hi, okay. my name is Tulin. Um, I, I, this is, I think this is, I've attended some of the Drupal monthly meetups when they were before COVID, when they were physical space, <laughs> the real 3D. Um, this is the first one I attend the, these. Uh, so, I, and I was in a previous meeting that, that was delayed. Um, so I joined later. Um, it seems like we are doing introductions right now, um, but uh, um, just to make sure I'm in, in the right place for the right reason, they, is there supposed to be like a small presentation as well? Um, yes. So, um, Did I miss the, main, the, the main focus was just getting to know people what the, the next step in their Drupal journey. And um, hopefully we, we, I think we will finish in maybe um, five, 10 minutes and then Sean um, will give us a, a, present, a short presentation about an authentication module. Yeah, this is our okay. second session at lunchtime and we'd like to be able to plan our content going ahead so that it meets the needs of people who are coming. So we'd like to know uh, what people would like to know. Okay, great, thank you. So, all right, so my name is Tuline and I work for the UN. Um, I'm in the website section. Um, I don't have extensive Drupal backend uh, experience, although I've kind of dabbled with it, but basically I, I work on the Drupal 7 platform. I do a lot of, uh, I, I don't think we do a lot, a lot of it correctly because we kind of inject CSS because the master CSS doesn't do what we need it to do. So we kind of, I think it might be the right way to say is hacking it, not using Drupal really the way Drupal is supposed to be used. But anyway, we're in the midst of migrating what we have on Drupal 7 to Drupal 9. It's not what I am exactly doing. Um, I do more front end, and um, but I want to learn more about uh, Drupal in depth. Um, the extent of my knowledge is uh, at one point I was working in a different team and I was kind of collaborating with a developer who was in India, uh, giving him business requirements and the things that we needed and then he would um, basically share uh, the, the code through GitHub and then somebody else in our team was grabbing it and putting it into the system. Um, but I want to know a little bit more of everything so that I can kind of um, participate more intelligently, let's, let's put it this way. Um, I have been involved in making some views, but that was a long time ago, and that was to create reports for um, specific uh, groups within the UN. Um, and uh, from my experience now, I've been trying to figure out, you know, how how um, Drupal 9 will be different from Drupal 7. Um, we're most likely looking into for, for, for the front end using, um, what is it called, a layout builder, right? There's a, a, for that. Um, and uh, I don't know exactly yet how how deep my involvement will be in it, but anyway, I still want want to learn more. Um, I don't know what else can I tell you. Uh, yeah, I mean, I I have been in 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 web um, since the '90s, so at some point when it was front page, <laughs> if you remember back in those days, I used to do some of that. Um, I've worked in web cool. in Arabic. So I had to do right to left. Uh, so I had to like, even if I wasn't involved in actually building a page, that's at the beginning of my UN um, tenure, I had to figure out how to um, redo the styling and all that so that it can understand right to left. Uh, but yeah, I, I would say that my experience more is, is, is the CSS and HTML and front end. Um, I am really interested in, in um, more dynamic and more micro animations. Um, I, I've attended, I've learned uh, Green Sock, um, if anyone is familiar with that, but that's like a JS library that you can tap into to do some cool effects. But yeah, that kind of summarizes it in a nutshell. Since I work at the UN, what am I doing with my spare time? Actually, COVID took it away from me. Before COVID, I was able to attend Chinese classes. <laughs> oh, I was cool. in progress, but since COVID, my workload has quadrupled I don't know how it seems like all my waking hours are are at work but I try to squeeze in time to read some um, some 
novels that are uh, right now I'm focusing on Japanese authors, although not Murakami. I don't like Murakami. <laughs> um, but yeah, I had to drop Chinese for a while, but I hope I get back into it um, uh, soon. Yeah, basically, I don't go out much. I have a lot of things that uh, occupy me internally uh, other than work. Um, yeah, art. Um, yeah, stuff like that. I do. I would like to get into kayaking, but not yet. <laughs> Something that I would appreciate. But yeah, that's that's where I'm at. Um, what would I like to learn? It seems like maybe basically everything. Um, one of your kind of more novels, whatever. You, you guys seem to be much more um, uh, much more experts and, and have a lot more deeper experience. Yeah. So, so Lynn, our, our kayak group is literally across the river from the UN. If you look at yeah, we, we meet with we very often have family kayaking at Gantry Plaza, but we're down oh. we're down the down the road down the very end of Vernon Boulevard is where our our kayaks are. But we use the second street um embankment to launch the kayaks. They're the little big green ones, the big tandems. Do you guys bring your own kayaks or are you no we have kayak we kayaks and it's always free. Oh, oh, can I join your group? <laughs> Yeah, I'll, I'll put I'll put it in, and they have an event on Sunday where they're cleaning up um some of the waterways. I'll I'll give you my my my, my personal email address. Uh, and remember, there's a Slack channel as well. So please, if there's other people, maybe we'll be the, the Drupal Drupal and Kai. Don't read out your email address on the recording, but uh, yes. please uh, post in Slack in our oh. private in, in our Slack. I, I can oh, copy that across the Slack as well. Okay. Well, I, oh, and I typo. I have a typo in my email address. So do right, you want to nominate the next person um, to? There's, I think, there's only two left, if I'm not mistaken. So I don't know who already went, so I can't really nominate because uh, okay. I did join my my morning meeting. To, to no Can you tell me who are the two? I'll, um, choose between Angela and oh. me. Angela. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate it. So oh, this is my first ever Drupal, uh, you know, seminar, call, you name it. Uh, oh, I'm just, for the last uh, three years, I was responsible for helping a, an Israeli company break into the U.S. market. And it was really just exposing mainframes into microservices. And now I'm switching and I'm getting into the commerce Drupal CMS PHP world. And I'm trying to get in from a technical educating myself, but also potentially finding a role for an organization that um, builds and builds hosting and solutions for that, that marketplace. So I don't know if you've ever heard of commerce guys. Uh, it's an e-commerce bunch of guys from France, but I'm friends with a yeah. few and uh, it seems that world is changing. And I, I've been selling it to DevOps world uh, for the last four years. And this seems to be, uh, that approach, but in the development community, you know, uh, from more of a front end DevOps strategy. And I think I could take some of those experience from dealing with mainframes and, and, and legacy assets and turning them into more digital products where I see it in this space too, maybe. I'm just learning more about it, but I, I, I realize on a daily basis, the content that I read and the sites that I'm on are most built on Drupal or WordPress and or PHP uh, based. So uh, this is an educational call for me. I, I think I'm gonna uh, learn more. I came from, uh, I, I know WebLogic. I was uh, back in the day, I worked for a bank uh, as a programmer, you know, I know some database, uh, but this is really my, my jump back into this space. During COVID, I live in New York City. During COVID, what we were doing uh, to keep ourselves busy is traveling you know, driving distances, couple hours north, couple hours south, a couple hours west. And, and every couple of weeks, we would uh, determine which way we're going. But we get to see little other places around America as, as uh, out of the U.S. Even though COVID was a lockdown and most of them, we were able to explore places. And for kids that were doing, uh, you know, virtual school, it was great because we checked into a hotel. We all made sure we had Wi-Fi and we didn't actually have to hang out with each other during the day. We were in separate rooms. It was great. So um, other than that, that's really my main reason for this. As this is really educational and um, really more and more. I think this is going to be an area where I'll, I'll explore my next decision of where I'm going. But I, I really feel it'll be in this space. 
Cool. Thank you, Angela. And Ephraim, lucky last. <laughs> I thought you could give me a forgotten someone. Okay, Ephraim. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Ephraim. I am from Venezuela, but I am living now in uh, Peru, Arequipa. I am working with David. Um, I am newbie in Drupal. I have just uh, one month learning about Drupal. So I have too many things to learn. Um, but I want to learn about views and um, logs. Cool. And what do you, uh, friend, what do you enjoy doing outside of Drupal? What? Well, um, what are your hobbies? What do you enjoy doing outside of Drupal? <laughs> um, <laughs> um, right now, <laughs> I am uh, coding and uh, posting some random stuff on the page. <laughs> cool. Yeah, I think we're, we're both in a, a um, pretty strong lockdown. Um, so hopefully we'll have some more hobbies once things open up again. But thank you, everyone. This has been really helpful. And I think one thing I'm hoping is that each of us have skills in different areas. And maybe someone has done a migration recently and would like to share a little bit more about that. Um, maybe someone's working with decoupled Drupal. Um, someone has, has got experience, for example, with dynamic content. Case, um, case clearing. Um, so we're hoping in the next uh, few weeks, uh, weeks and months, we can get people to try and, as a community, help each other. So thank you. And I, I took a lot more than time than I expected. So sorry about that, Sean, but love to hear now um, from you. That, that's okay. We plan this to be flex so that um, we could really hear from people what they wanted to learn and you and I can work on uh, Putting together some program for the months ahead. Um, okay, so uh, a few months ago, uh, I was working on a client project, and uh, we needed to use a lot to connect, to authenticate the Drupal site we were working on to an external service. And so I did what we all do. Um, I went to see if there was a module for that, um, um, and there was. But I started looking at the module. This is the the version of the code as it was then. Um, and uh, it had a good idea that uh, connection to an external service could be governed by a plugin, what Drupal 8 calls a plugin. Um, uh, now I heard that we have a variety of familiarity with Drupal 8 in the group today. So um, the Drupal 8 plugins uh, store their metadata in something called an annotation, which we'll look at an example of in a few minutes. Um, if you're used to working in Drupal 7, that's very much like an info hook um, uh, where you would get returned an array of, of metadata. So here is the annotation class in Drupal 8 that defines that metadata. And um, there's client ID. Um, and there's client secret. Um, and if you don't, if you know something about OAuth, you those, those, are, those are red flags. But if you don't know, know anything about OAuth, um, here's username and password. Now, um, these annotations get coded at the, at the into a plugin class, which means they go to version control. Um, so yeah, David's nodding his head. So that means that this version of the software was committing client ID, um, client secret, usernames and passwords to version control. Um, that immediately caught my eye. Um, I didn't realize, I didn't read closely enough on the module page where it says security coverage um, to recognize that this was a beta release of Drupal 8 um, and beta releases never received security coverage. Um, but the basic module, which originated in Drupal 7 had the little security seal. So it opens a, a security issue with the security team to say, hey, look at this. Um, and uh, the subsequent conversation, they said, well, we're not respond. we don't, we don't govern beta projects. And it turned out that the project was actually, um, the Drupal 7 maintainer had had some people write a Drupal 8 version and then they disappeared. So there really wasn't anybody to fix it. So my colleague and I um, uh, looked and there were hundreds of, of sites using this module in Drupal 8. And we felt um, 
that we had the bandwidth. And so, um, and so we took it over. So what did we do? Um, what can I say in five minutes? Um, let me see, let me drop out of presentation mode for a moment so I can shift branches. Um, so we developed a, uh, an entirely new branch. Uh, entirely new. We decided just to go to version three because when we release this, it's the easiest way to, um, uh, to show uh, people that um, it's completely changed. Um, and uh, well, the first thing that we did was we changed the annotations. Let's go back to presentation mode so it's big for you. Um, so you can see that um, there, there is, there's nothing secret in the annotation anymore. Um, we're, not, we're not committing anything, um, anything to code. Um, and instead, um, uh, what we're doing is um, we're collecting that information, um, but then we store it in a secure way. Um, uh, and there's two choices. Um, uh, one choice is to use Drupal 8 has a system called state. Um, uh, it, in Drupal 7, you had configuration and you had uh, content um, and uh, they were uh, both in the database. We have those things in Drupal 8, um, but Drupal 8 also has configuration export. Um, so even if you store it in configuration, um, if somebody were to export their configuration to flat to YAML files and commit that to their version control, they'd still have secrets um, in version control. That's not good. Um, so the state system is a key value store where you can store things in the database. Um, so it's fairly secure, uh, but it never gets exported. Um, so uh, the, the default implementation, um, if there's nothing else, is we store things in state. Um, but there's another module, um, the key module, uh, that is designed for um, uh, secure uh, uh, storage of keys, secrets. Um, uh, so we don't have to do any of that. Um, uh, so we also coded in an integration with the key module. So we define, which also uses plugins. Um, here's an example of how an annotation gets used in Drupal 8. Um, uh, we're defining a plugin here for the key module. Um, it's the OAuth2 um, key type, and um, it has a field for client ID and a field for client secret. Uh, the multi-value uh, plugin type for key module simply stores things in a JSON string. Um, uh, and so by, by defining these fields, um, we're defining the fields that you're gonna find in the JSON string. Um, in this plugin. Um, and the key module allows you to define a key um, with using a key type that we've defined here. And that key could be stored in the file system well outside the web root. Um, uh, there are also additional modules that extend key module for uh, commercial third party key value stores. So um, like Locker and various, uh, various services. So you could store this in some completely external um, secure uh, key value store. So what we have to do um, in our um, in our base class then um, is uh, in our configuration form. Um, let's see. That's not what I want. Let me just find it. Um, in our configuration form. Way up here. So um, uh, we have a place where we receive the credentials about the um, the particular client when you're in the admin interface in the UI, and um, uh, we check for uh, the key module being available. Um, and if there is, then we make a more complicated form where there's a drop down where you can choose whether you're gonna store the credentials via uh, this module or whether you're gonna use uh, a key module. Um, and if you use key module, all we ask for is a key ID. Um, and so uh, we essentially uh, move things out of annotation, um, out of configuration, uh, either into Drupal state system 
um, or in, using the uh, optional module of, uh, of key module uh, for uh, storing these external secrets. And, and the, the uh, method of having a, a, switch, a select switch in the configuration form um, I stole from the Swift mailer module, which also has key module integration. Um, and that's all the time we have. Uh, uh, but uh, bottom line, uh, don't store anything secret in version control um, uh, because someone will find it. I also think, it's, I also think for, for, for these one hour time things, it's important to end on time. Um, so uh, we asked you for an hour and that ends in two minutes. So uh, don't feel any pressure that you can't uh, drop out um, and go about your day. Um, but I, I have a couple more minutes so I can stay on and answer any questions anybody might have. Thanks, Sean. That was great. Agreed. Yeah. Thanks, Scott. Um, Very informative. Um, so this module's in, uh, up on Drupal.org. Um, in uh, it's in beta officially at the moment um, because I I had one collaborator who was using the module already um, who tested it on his website, um, uh, but. Uh, uh, I'd like a few more reports from people who are using it um, uh, before I make it a full 1.0 release. And I just got a, I just got a bug report. So I'm gonna work through that bug report probably and then move it to, to full release. And when we do that, we will mark the previous versions as unsupported, um, hopefully encouraging people to refactor their websites. Um, uh, this is not a site builder module. Um, you can't just install this module and have a loss. You have to code a pl plugin. Um, so hopefully, uh, people will see that and uh, and and change their code, you know, and then go change their client secrets on their on their external services. Because once you've committed a secret to version control, you just need to consider a compromise. And Sean, so just taking a step um, back, yeah. How are you using the OAuth uh, module? It, have you got a single? Is it for a single sign-on? Can you just? Sure. Um, uh, so I, I ended up not using this module um, uh, because I had it, I needed it for a client project. Um, and uh, that uh, I didn't have time to refactor the module and meet my deadline. Um, so I ended up doing the work I needed to do to implement OAuth in the module that I was implementing. And I, then I ported that work back into this module. Um, so I think there are probably two scenarios where I see this used. Um, the project I was working on, um, we were we were doing an external service. Um, so, um, uh, uh, you know, and in that particular situation, um, I was using the entity share. I was like actually extending the entity share module. So we were doing content sharing between two websites, um, and we were using OAuth um, to authenticate to the other Drupal website in order to pull content. Um, in that case, when you're doing an external service. Um, uh, you, you have only one token. You only have one connection. Um, uh, working on doing this uh, uh, rewrite, the other developers use case that I worked with, um, they had users who were um, authenticating for themselves um, to the third party service. So you have a token for every user. Um, um, state is not a good choice um, for storing the token. Um, if that's the case, because the state's shared by the whole website. Um, there is, and I have examples uh, in, um, uh, in here so of some other plugins. Um, and um, uh, let's see, is this, that one's storing in state. Um, which one is this storing in? I'm trying to remember the name of the other storage system. That's okay. It, it's good but, just to but, have the, but, but, but so that there's another storage system, um, Temp Store. Um, uh, Temp Store creates a store key value storage for every user, um, so it triggers session. Um, so um, I don't. It's not a good choice to use if you have the first model where you have this one 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 um, token because then you're triggering session for anonymous users and that breaks your cache. Um, but if you do have every user need to have their own token, um, then you want to store it in temp store. Thank you, Sean. Absolutely. 
So I learned a lot doing that port. I didn't even know temp store existed before then. All right, well, um, thank you for joining us today. Um, uh, if you think of something else you'd like to learn, uh, please post it in Drupal Slack in our in our uh, community Slack. Um, and if you have if you have expertise in any of the topics that were mentioned today, please reach out to David or me. Um, we're committed to continuing this daytime lunch and learn on the third Tuesday. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you everyone for participating.